Hello, how are you doing? So I thought we would try something that could possibly expose me for my awful university work. But here we are. So I am gonna, as you can tell from the title, I'm gonna look through my old university work. I'm looking at my old portfolios. Usually at the end of each semester or at the end of each year, we submitted a huge PDF with all our research and all our like final projects on. So what I'm gonna do is just go through them all. I've opened my first year, second year and third year folders. And I actually studied, if you didn't know, I studied media production at the University of Lincoln. In first year, you do a whole range of different subjects. I did design, photography, digital media, radio, film, TV. We did six, I think, different practical subjects. So design was only a small part. In second year, I did design and digital media. And then in third year, I did design. So you kind of like specialize as you go forwards. So hopefully you'll see improvements. I haven't looked at these in probably two years. I graduated in September of 2018. So I have on my screen my first year presentation and we actually did it in PowerPoint, which is a bit weird to me now because we always did things in InDesign and we made PDFs whereas we did it in PowerPoint apparently. So we were tasked to do a magazine design and you, you were told to do it on something that you liked and classic me did it on YouTube and YouTubers. So I went through, I'm just gonna flick through basically. We had to do some research about YouTubers. This is what I did. There's Eve Bennett, the gal, the one and only. Um, and we got given these sketchbooks to like doodle in and this was literally the whole project and I remember being so stressed about this but it's actually pretty simple now I look back. I wonder if they still do this at the course. Obviously you can pause and read this if you want but we had to get like inspo, I chopped up a load of magazines. Basically I did cutting and sticking for a whole um, semester which was great. Yeah and I was trying to find ideas for powerful women, good photos, I was doing text and typography styles, like super basic stuff actually. I did a bit of research about the different names for different parts of fonts. I do not remember this stuff, I literally still do not remember so my bad. Sketching, all that jazz. And then what we really wanna see here is the actual magazine. So yeah, this is basically like my research. I went to town. I did some practice covers here on the right. So I've got some photos of me because humble. And I have a photo of, is that Naomi? I'm not sure, but yeah, oh yeah, it is Naomi. So these were some draft covers. I think it's all right, actually. It's not too bad for a um, first go at making a magazine. I pinched some photos on the internet, pinched a little barcode, Bethany Motor. I used to love Bethany Motor. Oh my God, this is when Jim and Tanya were still a thing. Still upset about that, not gonna lie. And you can just see the development of me using, I actually used InDesign for this and I do not love InDesign, although it is the go-to for like publication sort of presentation style things. But yeah, the development, I loved blocky colours and some of my old pals. Yeah, and the final designs. I did this poster, so this was like a pull-out poster of the OG YouTube gang. What a throwback. And I thought this was so cool. To be honest, 2015 me would have loved to have this on my bedroom wall. So, you know, we'll just roll with it. And, and this is the final piece. Ignore the fact that there's text boxes in the background because I can't be bothered to put it on full screen. But yeah, page one, I think we had to do eight pages. The wedding of the year, Jim and Tanya. Can we just take a minute to uh, RIP Janya? Then Naomi, the proper old school YouTube pals. YouTuber honesty hour, I loved that part of um, Sitsi. So that's why I included that. And then my poster. And that was my whole project. That took a solid three months, 12 weeks of work. Mm, don't know how that works. And we had to present it in class. So that's why it's in a, what is it, PowerPoint, because we had to sit and talk to the whole class. And that was very scary, but we got there. So that's first year design project. Oh, hey, if you are enjoying this video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join my little creative family. I actually also really enjoyed digital media in first year and second year, obviously, because I took it. And that's when we used After Effects. After Effects is like Marmite for me. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship. I love what it looks like at the end, but I hate how long it takes to do things. I don't have 
the best levels of patience. So this is a little animation that I created for first year design, not design, digital media, and I think it's actually pretty good. I'm not sure if the audio is on this, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Magical. So we got given like a brief to create a, I think it was like an advertisement, like a film promo shot. And we had a set title to choose from, like three different options. And so we, I chose the Dreamtime one and I made it all cute and like, hot air balloon and took me ages and it's it's actually pretty impressive but it's not the best and there were so many people who just smashed it and like could think of these amazing ideas but after effects is not my forte so we move we continue so for second year like i said i actually took design and digital media so half of my time was spent doing design and half of my time was spent doing digital media so we have a bit more improvement. We had more projects to do and I think I might have done some client work too. So this is my first portfolio from presuming semester one. I've opened that many files today, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, so page one, I went for this kind of blocky style font and then we did the research so i looked into typography this is when i truly discovered my love for pinterest did all the research and we had to create our own typography in both digital form and physical form so i was sketching out some ideas and then i came up with a slight blocky font it does sort of remind me of the 2012 olympics uh so i made that font it's very hard to read but my tutor loved this so I was happy with that you know please the tutor that's what you need to do to get a good grade but yeah that even with the colour on looks even more like the 12, 2012 Olympic um, font we did some mock-ups this is when I discovered mock-ups by the way is it Graphic Burger that does really good mock-ups I did not know these were a thing and I was mind blown that you could do this so yeah I use mock-ups a lot from this moment then we did physical fonts so I was like playing with the idea of using string or like there's obviously matchsticks actual food i did one with chocolate so i used like chocolate puree and sort of wrote it out like this one but i don't think that went well yeah that's how it looked and i put it on foil to make it kind of look cool but i literally say here it looked quite amateur and i wasn't pleased and i agree with past alice i'm glad you didn't go for that it looks very amateur so we went for this and i did loads and loads probably hundreds of nails in this board me and my dad in the garage took a quote from alice in wonderland this still exists actually in our garden i'm surprised it's not disintegrated but i made this and in theory it was going to look great but in practice it was kind of hard to read so my tutor appreciated the effort let's say i didn't get like the greatest result but he, he liked the effort which I'm happy with I'll tell you that then we did pictographs which is basically just little icons so I researched those and created my own for like the martial arts school I went to I wanted to redo them so do you know, like brownie patches and they like sew them onto your uniform that's basically what I wanted to design so I designed them on illustrator uni was the first time i used illustrator so it's now been five years that i've been using illustrator and it baffled me completely maybe a bit longer than five years actually because i did dabble in like vector portraits before i went to uni but i didn't understand it at all so yeah i made these in illustrator very very basic did different colors i think i mocked them up on t-shirts <laughs> the worst mock-up i've ever seen gotta say wow what a great mock-up <laughs> and then we did infographics so uh, I think I did mine on different countries and this was the moment where I had my little breakdown um, I went on a trip with uni and came back and I hadn't finished this project so I didn't actually get a very good grade on this but, like look at how pixelated the photo is in the background it looks a bit rubbish it wasn't the best and it's because I wasn't in a great headspace at the time but yeah that was reflected in my grade my tutor literally noted how um, it could have been better but I just put this all together on illustrator and I got 
the icons and stuff online, sort of vectorized everything. I actually went to Graz, that's why I had my meltdown because I was out of uni for a week and a bit. So I did some facts about Graz, we went on a little school trip, it was great. And yeah, that's, I guess that's it. I think that's all I did for the first semester. Okay, second semester. I think this is when I was sort of getting the hang of it and deciding that I actually quite enjoyed graphic design. I took on the feedback and I've presented it sort of differently this time, which hopefully we'll see from what I remember. I did it two pages. Oh my God, this is such a throwback. Branding design, maybe? Of course you can pause this and read it. Oh, I went to London and took some photos. So these are all my photos to get inspiration to do a logo design. I remember we did like burger, something burger logo. I can't remember. And we had to do research. So I basically just went to the library and stole quotes out of books, obviously referenced them, found a photo, Bob's your uncle. So yeah, I think it was Graphic Burger. Frank Burger. Ah, Graphic Burger's a website. We had to make a logo for a fake brand called Frank Burger. So I sort of sketched it out. And you can see here, this is the same process that I use now for logo design. I just sketch out the most rough looking sketches. Then I put them into Illustrator. I trace over them. So you can see on the left here that I'm literally just tracing over the ideas and making them digital. And then I narrow it down to my favorite few, pros and cons of each. Then I develop the one that I like the most. So I actually went with this one. Um, we tried some different outlines and borders and all that kind of thing. I actually quite like that still, it's pretty good. Um, don't love this one, but you can see why. Um, that was my third development and then fourth development. And I went straight back to the first one. And this is where I was getting the hang of mock up. Oh, I hand wrote the font too. I think this was the first time I proper experimented with calligraphy. Uh, look at how, wobbly this is how did I manage that so this is like my first little experimentation with calligraphy and now I do it on my greeting cards and stuff which is quite cool so yeah that's my little Frank Berger logo um, presented it in different colors did some packaging ideas um, and mocked them up again graphic burger sounds like a sponsored video definitely isn't um, but I do love graphic burger it's a great website for mock-ups and yeah we can mock it up on coffee cups and coffee pots I guess. Then we did a website page for them. I did that for extra brownie points basically. Just like a quick mock-up page. It wasn't an actual working website obviously. And then packaging. We are on to packaging. I think I did it for the same brand. Pretty sure I wanted to like make a full branding design. So I went from logos to colour and then packaging. And this is paper cutting and now I have my little Cricut which is down here, if you haven't seen the video. She's amazing, I love my Cricut. And I could have done this in like 10 seconds, but I did it all by hand, so wait till you see this. Look, I'm using the Frank Burger, and I was hand cutting out all these little pieces, and it took me ages, and it didn't even look that good, it was quite messy. But again, my tutor very much appreciated the effort. It's the taking part that counts, right? <laughs> I think he was just, um, pitying me maybe not sure but you know we move yeah so I mocked up some packaging they wanted us to practice doing like physical designs as well as things that are online or on screen should I say so I printed out a mini version of a little burger box takeout box and mocked those up folded them up smashed it then oh my god the book I can go and get this hang on all right never mind scrap that I got overexcited because I actually have physical copies of this book that I made. So we got tasked to make a children's storybook and I was in my element, but I can't find the actual copy. So there's photos of it in here. Um, and I actually have, I think, a video of me reviewing my whole portfolio. So I will leave that linked in the description if I find it. But I made this little mouse guy and I created him on Illustrator. This was before I had my Wacom tablet, so I just sort of winged it. And it's very basic and very crap looking back. But my tutor was buzzing about this and I was so happy. Um, and it actually led me on to doing another book later down the line. Look at the little mouse. So I actually ended up using actual watercolors and I used clipping masks to cut them out. So I'm sort of describing it here. So I like 
painted a load of rough looking watercolours myself, scanned them into my computer and then chopped them out into clipping masks and did that for all the different elements. And I think that was quite a cool idea. I can kind of see why my tutor enjoyed it. You can definitely like make it look a lot better now if I did it again. Maybe I should do that. Maybe that's a good video. Let me know if you'd like me to redo my uni projects. I feel like that'd be quite cool. But yeah, these are my little developments. And this is Mr. Mouse and the scratchy noise. I can't remember the story. Should we read it? It was a warm night and Mouse couldn't sleep. He was laid in bed and could hear a scratchy, scratchy noise. He looked out of his window and saw Mr. Moon looking down. He asked, Mr. Moon, what's that noise? Mr. Moon answered, it's just the wind. Sleep, little mouse. I'm already bored of reading this. That was my favourite page and that was also my tutor's favourite page. He loved the dynamics of it and I wrote a lot of words about how amazing it was and why I did it like that. It definitely wasn't a mistake and I was just flicking paint when I got bored. It was intentional. <laughs> so I did little pages and it was printed out in like this little tiny like square book and I made it and we stapled it and it looked super cute and yeah I'll have to definitely link that other other one because I had that physically in hand like look at it it actually came out so good too I was very impressed with myself if you can't tell um okay so that is second semester of second year so now I'm gonna show you some of my digital media stuff because it's sort of design but this is assist me so we got tasked to create a app and I decided to do one that would help people with dementia or learning difficulties sort of live their lives so you'd like scan items in your house and it'd tell you how to use them at the time I thought it was quite a good idea but in practice it didn't actually really work but we had to do an interview um, my friend Jade was actually worked in like a assisted living house so I interviewed Jade for it and did my research and I actually made like an app in the end so I made up all these icons in Illustrator you can see here I was like sort of playing with the idea for a logo and I ended up with this so they'd have like this is the app icon and then this as the fonts and then we used is it Adobe XI UX? I used to have it on my phone, but you could literally mock up apps so you could pretend that they were physically working just to get an idea. So we used that Adobe XD, I think it was called, and you could sign a C. I'm not sure why that's there. That's a glitch. Um, but you could like make it so it clicked and it changed pages. So I mocked up all the pages, did this cool little color scheme. I actually really like that color scheme user interface ui and yeah they did different times and it reminded you to brush your teeth it reminded you to take a shower it reminded you to go for a walk etc and we did all the different pages i had a huge illustrator document with all the like layouts of the different pages and yeah it was quite fun actually making a app thing again mock-ups love mock-ups can you see i'm going up in the world with mock-ups <laughs> um, and I think I actually made an advertisement, which I have prepared for you earlier. It is here. So this, I think I pinched the actual template from somewhere and then edited it in After Effects because at this point I've realized After Effects is not my friend. And it doesn't have an audio. Um, I think we did an audio in the end, but I, I don't have that version for some reason. Um, so yeah, I just put this little animation together and I feel like that's the cheats way of doing it because this was already sort of made and I moved like finger and then like you could add in the like swipes and all that kind of stuff but it worked really well and I feel like I utilized the parts of the project that I was actually good at and then used a template for the rest of it not sure if I got marked down on that but yeah level three this is final year graphic design so I guess this is where I was studying graphic design I did only study it for a year officially a year in university terms as well so it's not even a proper year but hopefully we can sort of see the progress so this is third year i love the children's book idea so i actually made something called peter panda this is not the final one wait wait mm, it kind of is i'm looking basically it's all the research that you have to do all the 
talking you have to do and this is the other actual story for Peter Panda which I wrote myself. One of my projects I got someone else to write for me but I feel like the other one I made myself, I can't remember which way around. So this is Peter Panda. This was when I had my Wacom tablet. This was the project that made me buy my Wacom tablet and I still have it and I still use and I still love it. So I made all the characters really, really basic. If I did it again, I think I'd definitely add textures, more shadows, make it come alive a little bit more. But I think for still a pretty novice at Illustrator, I mean, I still class myself as like intermediate maybe at Illustrator, but yeah, I did loads of characters and then drafted out my page spreads. So, you know, when I tell you I can't draw, this is an example of it. This is my sketches. That's what happens in my brain. And I just chucked it on the paper and kind of went from there. So from that, I made up some different pages. So I used a combination of like Illustrator and InDesign um, and made up the pages and they were like linked. So anytime I updated a page in Illustrator, it updated the file in InDesign. So yeah, I ended up making Peter Panda. And again, I do have a whole video of me going through all of that work in more detail, but we got it printed in this little like hardback, not hardback, soft cover, both saddle stitch and perfect bound books. And I think it just, I'm just really happy with it. I'd love to go back and develop that a bit more. This page was my favorite one, the one with like the sky and I did all the layers for the clouds. I think it worked pretty well. And for the concept of it being a kid's book, I was pretty happy with it. I printed out some little test pages of the pages for Peter Panda. I looked into different places to print them. And then these are the final PDFs that I sent to the printers and sort of the page layout. And I don't know, I just, I absolutely love this. And for ages it was on display in the design classroom because we got it perfect bound and saddle stitch, like I said. So yeah, I was just very happy with this and having the actual physical book was just pretty cool. I was gonna get hardback, but hardback books are really expensive to buy. So yeah, that was that. Then I did merchandise. So I actually obviously have my YouTube channel and at the time I'd released merch and my tutor said I could use that as part of my project because it's a good representation of my design work, I guess. So I put in there, if you can remember these, by the way, please let me know in the comments. I did note cards, I did notebooks, and then I did a hoodie. Um, that hoodie is still going strong, by the way. It's the same supplier that is making the new t-shirts. So yeah, super good quality. And also the desk planner. So yeah, I found that really cool that I could sort of integrate my YouTube and my merch stuff with my degree. And I remember shipping those out for my uni room. It was great. So then I did a research, not a research, a project for an open mic night. So I was playing around with some different ideas. It was at a pub in Lincoln. So I had to vectorize their logo because it was really, really poor quality. And I couldn't just image trace it because the image trace wasn't working. So I actually had to draw around it and we came up with this. So I used a few different layers. I used this graphic and it sort of had the main information on it with sort of like a vintage style font on it. And it actually, the client was really happy with these and they all sort of tied in with like a Facebook banner. I still think they look pretty cool actually. I'd probably do it a bit different now, but I think that's a pretty good choice. Then I got approached by a client to do a logo for a charity and I love this. I hope this is still in action because it's an actual real life charity, but it was called Street Safe. So I looked at different color theories. So this was like the first scheme I went with, but I thought it looked a bit too harsh to be a charity. I think it was for like homeless people. So they went out on the streets and kept people safe and off the streets effectively. But then we went for more of a toned down pastel sort of shade. And then there was sort of development as we went on and we choose different, choosed, we chose at different colors, chose different fonts and we came up with this design. And I liked how it was like two S's working together to make help people out. Um, and the client was really happy with that. So again, used the trusty mock-ups, mocked up a um, Twitter page. Then I did a whole bunch of portraits. So this, if you have followed me for a while, will probably remember when I asked for a bunch of these. So I just did these on Illustrator with my Wacom tablet. Again, if I did this now, like this one's pretty cool. This one's pretty cool. This one, it needs more shadow on it. I think you can see from that how I've developed my sort of style and I guess I've got a bit more confident with it like their faces sort of blend together so but they're all right I'm pretty impressed with those then I got a brief for the university itself they wanted me to do a poster for meet the graduates so this was my first 
draft. I actually remember whoever the tutor was that was like in charge of this was really picky. <laughs> so it wasn't my favourite. Um, they wanted this banner and then they wanted more banners and then this got put up all around the uni which was pretty cool to see. I actually have it here like that was on all the doors in the design building and I was just like walking past like I did that that was me <laughs> then we did a competition brief and you had to apply for a competition we did like wallpapers this idea didn't go well I wanted to do like monsters out of paint splats but it looked rubbish so I gave up went back to the drawing board and I did like characters in this sort of style you know from like the previous year and I made a wallpaper again don't love it I, I probably do that a lot differently now I think the one thing I have developed in recent years is doing patterns it's okay but it's a bit naff isn't it I feel like I could have laid that out a lot more creatively rather than them all just being like plonked on and like added some vines or something on it I don't know I actually think I missed something so this was in second year I did like another um after effects project and it was I'm not sure why we did a toothpaste thing but I fully did this from scratch and you can kind of see why animation isn't my strong point so if you ever have emailed me and said can you make me a youtube intro this is why I shouldn't because this is embarrassing <laughs> and I got a pretty low grade on that because so many other people did so many sick versions of it and I was just like no not for me but that is it I apologize for how long this video is probably going to be it's interesting to see actually I will leave the videos where I went through each year's portfolios I think I did it as it happened so that's like old Alice and probably like really high pitched and a bit annoying but probably still am annoying so yeah if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you next week for another little creative video bye <laughs>